So what do we know about this guy? First thing we know about him is that he's dead. He's very, very dead. He's buried, he's in the ground, he ain't coming back. And the reason I mention this is because when people hear the word Shakespeare, they sometimes begin to act very strange. They begin to act as if they're scared of something like, oh, that's going to be hard, or I'm not going to understand that, or that's for like actor types, and actors are weird, and I don't want to be around them. They start acting like they're scared of Shakespeare, but he's dead. He cannot hurt you. Uh, there's no reason to be scared of Shakespeare because he's dead. He does not care. There is no zombie Shakespeare that is going to come and eat your brain that if you screw amazing. it up. It would be amazing. I agree. I would totally pay to see that. But it, it doesn't happen. There is no zombie Shakespeare. You can't screw it up. It's not like man, where if you get it wrong, you know, bad things can happen. The man is dead. You, you shouldn't worry about it. It should be a source of joy and interest, not of fear, because he's dead. Um, and he's dead a long time. Shakespeare. Born in 1564, died in 1616. He actually died on his 52nd birthday. Worst birthday present ever. He's dying. I can sort of see what that birthday was like. Happy birthday to, oh, you're dead. <laughs> Never mind, I'll stop singing the song. You're dead. Okay, fine. Um, so we feel bad for this guy. 52, fairly young, actually, to die. Um, dies on his birthday. I'll get to questions in a second. Please do not forget it. Please hold on to it. Um, now, I know as soon as I wrote these dates on the board, half of your brain just stopped worrying. Like, oh, dates, boring, flat line. <laughs> don't worry, you don't need to know these dates. There's only one number you really need to remember. Shakespeare's most successful year, maybe, the year he was most famous at the height of his power, was about three years before he died in 1613. That was uh, the year he was very, very wealthy at that point in time. That's the he writes The Tempest, which is the play we're seeing on Friday. Now, this is not a trick question. What year is it right now? 1913, <laughs> really? Okay, now, very small piece of math. So how long ago was this? 400 years. Thank heaven you know yeah. that. I've taught this to my fifth graders before. It's like, 5,000 years! Uh -huh. No, no, you did a child. Um, so, no, not 5,000 years, 400 years. About 400 years this year. 400 years exactly. This year was Shakespeare's biggest year. Now, 400 years, of course, is a long time. The world was very different 400 years ago. America did not exist as a country back then. It was, it was a series. It wasn't even colonies, mostly, to that point. Um, so all the things that we're familiar with, New York and Hollywood and Raleigh, did not exist. Electricity was not used at this point in time. It had not been sort of harnessed. So the world very different. England led by a queen named Elizabeth, very powerful. But a very different world than today. I would like you to think, please, about your life, about your life and what you do for fun. By raise of hands, what are some of the things that you personally do for fun that you would not have been able to do 400 years ago? Sneeze. Shop. Shop. No, you could not. Malls do not exist. Um, typically, if, you, if you're going to buy something, it has to be made. I mean, even if you're very wealthy, you don't go shopping. You have people come to you and make stuff. So like going to the mall shopping does not happen. What else could you not do? Maybe? Video games. Video games. No PSP, no PS3, no PS4, no Xbox One or 360, no DS, no Wii, no Vita, none of it. It's a Vita. It's a little device. It's, it's a PS Vita. Um, anyway, none of that sort of stuff. Um, no Steam, I know it breaks my heart as well, um, but no video games, no shopping, what else? Um, no wrestling with puppies. No, well, you could wrestle with puppies. They had puppies, they had wrestling. You couldn't film it and put it on YouTube, as <laughs> frequently happens. Uh, what else? Internet. Yes, no internet, no computers whatsoever. So, no looking up stuff on Wikipedia, no chatting with friends on Twitter, no watching videos of cats falling down stairs on YouTube. All of these things that we take for granted do not happen. What else are we missing, John? Not only really no cell phones, no phones at all. If you want to talk to someone, you have to go and talk to them or write them a letter. And there was no post office, so you had to have that letter delivered. So, no phones, no texting. Sorry, girls. Um, none of it. What else? Not have beepers. No, no. This is 400 years ago. No. 400 years ago. Not y'all, because I was not alive then. Oh, I mean. <laughs> as touched as I am that you think I, I'm a friend of Shakespeare's from 400 years ago. No, no I, not 400. <laughs> Point being, no phones, no beepers, you had to talk. So, uh, no internet. I'll point out some other things. No television. No radio, if, uh, no recorded music. If you want to listen to something, you better learn to play an instrument. Also, a couple other things. If you like to read for fun, 
probably couldn't do that either because half the people were illiterate. If you play sports for fun, most of the sports we play have not been invented yet. No football, no soccer, no hockey, no rugby, no baseball, no basketball. Most of the, the only sports that they played back then that we still play today, they had tennis, so play tennis you're safe, and they had golf. Oh, yeah, the golf. worst and most boring sport there is. So this all sounds pretty boring, right? Uh, the world sounds pretty boring 400 years ago, but it totally was. But one of the things that they did have, which was very, very popular, because all the stuff that we do, they didn't have, was the theater. People would go to the theater to see live plays. And because they didn't have all the stuff we do, it was hugely, hugely popular. It wasn't like, let's see a movie tonight. It was like, let's see a play tonight. It wasn't, well, what's on TV? It was, let's see a play tonight. It wasn't, let's watch videos of cats falling downstairs on YouTube. It was, let's see a play. So the theater, I'll probably get the question in one second. Please do not forget. Um, the theater was as popular as all those things combined. The theater was huge. Everybody went to the theater because it was one of the few things you could do. And the Shakespeare guy wanted to be part of that. Shakespeare wanted to be an actor. He wanted to be a big, famous actor in the theater. There were a couple of problems. First of all, he's from this little town in the English countryside called Stratford. Stratford is next to a river. The river is called the Avon. So sometimes we call it Stratford on Avon, or if you're really pretentious, Stratford upon Avon. Um, doesn't matter. Here's my, so Shakespeare's from here, it's in England. Here's my advice to you. Uh, have any of you ever been to England? A couple people have, lovely. If you get a chance, go to England. I go to London every two years, it's so great, but here's my advice. If you go to England, do not go to Stratford. It is the most boring place in the world. I hated it when I was there. Shakespeare hated it when he was there. Um, you think, oh, it's in the English countryside, by a river, it's pretty. No, it's not pretty. There's nothing there but boring English trees. Um, I wanted to get out of there very quickly, so did Shakespeare. So when he's quite young, he leaves Stratford. Um, we're not quite sure of the year, but he's when he's like 21, 22. He leaves Stratford, which we will refer to as Boringville for the remainder of the day. He leaves Boringville. He goes someplace much more interesting. He goes to London. London at this time was the biggest city in the world. It was the most exciting city in the world, and he goes there because he wants to be an actor. Now, this would be the same to you. Have, if any of you, raise your hand if you've ever dreamed of going to New York or Hollywood and being a big famous actor and making your name in movies or television things. We, many of us have that dream. Um, yes, many of us have that dream. Of course, there was no Hollywood at this time. There was no New York at this time. If you wanted to be an actor, you went to London. So that's the dream that Shakespeare had. He leaves his own little town, Stratford's a very small town. He goes to London. He wants to be an actor. He gets there. He's ready to be an actor. There's only one problem. He sucks. Um, he is not a very good actor. He gets in with an acting company, so he's not super, super horrible, but he's not getting the lead roles. He's not becoming hugely successful. He's not making a lot of money as an actor. So he thinks, okay, what, what can I do to still be in the theater and not be an actor? So he starts just to try to write plays. This is something that actors sometimes would do back then. It turns out he's really good at it. He's really, really good at it. He's so good that 400 years later, we're still doing those plays that he wrote. Now that's kind of amazing, right? I don't think anything I've created in my life is going to last for 400 years. Nothing I write, nothing I do, no one is going to remember me 400 years from now. Maybe they will you, maybe not. 400 years is a long time. But we're still doing his plays, so there must be something in them that is good enough that we remember this actor from Stratford's plays for 400 years. There's been a lot of other plays since then, why don't we do those? Well, there's something in these, we'll talk about what that is. So 400 years ago. So he goes to London, goes to the theater. Before we talk about those plays and what, what's in them that makes us still do them, I want to talk just a little bit about the theater itself back then. 